Lignin is one of the most abundant materials found on Earth, and it comprises nearly 30% of all plant mass. Currently, there's an estimated 150 billion tons of lignin on Earth. As societies shift towards renewable and sustainable forms of energy, petroleum refining and petroleum products will become unviable and biomass will have to replace it as the primary feedstock. In this video, I hope to give you a brief introduction to lignin and highlight some challenges in making chemicals from lignin. Lignin is the second most abundant biopolymer found in trees and is primarily located in the plant cell walls. The cell walls are comprised of three main components, cellulose making up 50%, which forms long fibers that allows the plant to stand up straight. Lignin, making up between 20 and 30% of the cell wall, acts as the glue and provides the plant with rigidity and resilience. Finally, hemicellulose binds the cellulose fibers and lignin together. Lignin's industrial relevance is currently limited to the pulp and paper industry and primarily craft pulping. Here, wood is fed into the process and then the primary product, cellulose, is converted to various paper products. Lignin is still produced as a byproduct. The primary end use of this lignin is to be burned to generate electricity and power on site for the mill. Every year, approximately 65 million tons of lignin is isolated, and approximately 99% of that is just burned. In order to understand what lignin is chemically, we should review some basic organic chemistry. Three of the most common elements of organic chemistry are carbon, denoted by the letter C, hydrogen, denoted by an H, and oxygen, denoted by an O. An important structure, particularly for lignin, is the aromatic ring, which is comprised of six carbons double bonded to each other to form a ring. The structure can be drawn as a hexagon with these lines, or as a hexagon with a circle. But for this video, I will draw just plain hexagons to represent the aromatics in lignin. Two other important bonds to know are ether bonds, which is a carbon bound to an oxygen, which is bound to another carbon, these are relatively weak and fragile bonds that can be easily broken. The other type are aerial bonds, which is just a carbon bounded to another carbon. These are much stronger and difficult to break. Lignin is a random aromatic polymer linked together by ether and aerial bonds. If we can depolymerize lignin by breaking these bonds, we can produce monoaromatic chemicals such as phenol. These monoaromatic chemicals can be used as starting points for many different products such as plastics or pharmaceuticals and medicine or detergents, herbicides, and many other products. But this is not as easy as it sounds. Native lignin or lignin within the cell wall is primarily linked together by ether bonds, making up over 60% of the linkages. But there are still a few of the difficult to break aerial bonds Overall, the structure is easy to depolymerize to yield monomeric products. However, when the lignin is removed from the cell wall or isolated, the structure begins to change. First, many of the desirable ether bonds break. Second, the lignin structure begins to react with itself or in lignin lingo condenses to form more of the undesirable aerial bonds. This isolated structure is very difficult to break down to monoaromatic products. So the first challenge for making chemicals for lignin is developing a process that can either protect the ether bonds or prevent more aerial bonds from forming. Of course, any process that can do these also has to be economical. Which brings us to the second challenge of making chemicals from lignin, implementing the process on an industrial scale. The first way is to retrofit the existing industry. Nearly all current industrial biomass processing follows the model we described earlier, where cellulose is the primary product and the lignin these produce cannot be used to make chemicals. So a second process would need to be added at the front end that could, make, that could produce usable lignin without damaging the cellulose. The second way would be to create a whole new process. 
This process would target the lignin as one of the primary products instead of treating it as a byproduct. Unfortunately, these types of processes tend not to make cellulose that is suitable for paper products, and so the sugar stream would have to be converted to fuels or base chemicals as well, which are often less valuable than paper. There's currently a lot of research being investigated on all of these fronts in order to make chemicals from lignin a reality, and I feel the future is bright. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have learned something new.